20 to 8 after 7 minutes and then all of a sudden it turns the other way. One particular thing or just a combination of things happening? Well, I think that uh, their game Saturday, I thought that they played incredibly well. I thought they played with great freedom, great confidence, um, a much faster game than normal. In the first seven minutes, obviously, that continued. Um, we did not handle the intensity. We did not handle their pace. Um, we were a little out of sorts. But I do think – I think um, – we were up 12 with, or excuse me, down 12, like you said, with 13 minutes to play and then up six at half. So I thought the, the rhythm was a little different and a little more conducive to how we want to play uh, the rest of the first half. And then there were stretches in the second half, to be honest with you, that I thought it was back to that same first seven-minute pace, that first seven-minute. So, yeah, for sure I agree. Because you've coached in this league for a while, you've been here before when they've had some success. Obviously, the last couple of years have not been optimal for Ole Miss. When you look at this job, I don't mean for you, but just in general, how, how good of a job could the Ole Miss job be? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I think that the job that AK did here over 11 years was phenomenal. Um, I think my opinion. I think on both sides of the ball, Kermit Davis was the best coach in this league. Inside the lines, the best coach. He's had every bad job. He's had every hard job. Been a head coach since he was 27 years old. I think a lot of what transpired in the five years here, some of it was out of his control. The, the little guard that was a McDonald's All-American from baseline to baseline as, as fast as number five at Tennessee, completely changes their team when he's not healthy. I think a lot of the things that have transpired have been, I don't know if bad luck is the right word, but year number one, I think they went to the NCAA tournament. The, the margin is just so thin, and I think in – um, I guess I've been here one year less than Coach Davis was here. Even in the time that I've been here, I think whoever you would say the bottom teams in the league are have dramatically improved. And so even if you're improving, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're skipping teams and I think that it's gotten closer to the mean. I think what Alabama has done this year is an outlier, and they're deserving of everything that they've done. But if you statistically look at the last 10 years in this league and who has won this league, how many losses have they had? And then if you look at the bottom teams, whoever they were over those 10 years, I just think it's closer to the mean. And so the margin, it just becomes so thin. Like uh, number 12 at LSU scores uh, 25 points here on Saturday. And on Saturday, both teams were 2 and 13. And Ole Miss scores 82 points, the highest that they've scored all season long. It's just such a – the the – the value of the possession over the last four years has just continued to magnify. Um, and I also think that the model of college athletics has changed. And so you have to be able to coach in between the lines or it's not going to work. But your skill set has to be more than just coaching in between the lines anymore. Um, how you put together a roster 10 years ago, that's not how you put together a roster now. And so because there's such roster volatility, your style of coaching has to change because it's very much plug and play. 
I think we have six newcomers on our team this year. Well, if your if your system requires so many reps of practice and so many game reps to be able to execute, then you probably have to change your system because you can average five to seven newcomers every year. And so it's become very professional like in regards to this is how we're going to play offense and this is how we're going to play defense. And we can tweak relative to our personnel, but systematically you can't make wholesale changes every year because you're going to have so many new guys. And I think the skill set of your staff, in the same way that the head coach's skill set has to change, I believe your skill set of your staff has to morph as well. In July, you can, similar to football now, in July you can add two more coaches. And what nobody's talking about is you're about to see wholesale changes across the country in staffs because every head coach is going to have to make a decision. I can, I can be on the road and I can recruit. Then I can have three guys in addition to me go recruit. And then I can have two more guys that can all time coach. So now there's six coaches and four recruiters. So how are you going to utilize that? Right. And I think you'll see it even in the, Secondary sports, you can't have volunteer coaches anymore. So how many volunteers do you have in baseball? How many do you have in track and field? Well, that's all gone. And so the commitment of the school, the commitment of the league has changed in a positive way if you're a coach in the last four years. And I think, I think it's made every job hard, but I'm a coach, so that's probably the wrong answer to give. Sorry for a long answer. No, thank you. Yeah. Last question is, I uh, know she got a game Saturday. It's a pretty big ball game before a tournament. Does that fall at a good time? Or is it, you know, because you've already locked second. They're locking first. It's not going to change standings or anything like that. Are you sure? Uh, yes, sir, I believe so. 14 and 3, and I think they're something in one. They're going to play Wednesday. Do they? Yeah, they still I beg your pardon, They're going to play Auburn tomorrow. Yeah, I beg your pardon. So there's some chance. Okay. <laughs> there's a chance. Not being a jerk, but no, like no, some chance. But it's yeah, really we're, we're, you know, like uh, I think this is the, this is the uh, 14 conference wins is the most in school history, and the last time it happened was with Coach Metcalf 43 years ago. So we're very thankful. Uh, we're grateful that. Uh, we're playing on CBS at 11 o'clock in the morning. Um, I, to be honest with you, I haven't studied Alabama at all. I know they play really fast. I know they have the best players. I know that uh, they've, they've done a great job, number one offense, number one defense, all of those things. But I really don't know much about how they play just because they're not a mirror opponent and they were the last game. And so I haven't studied them. So we got a lot of work to do. All right. Okay. Thank you, guys. Yes, sir. Thank you.